Hello everyone, welcome to a vintage video. If you watched my previous video, you will know that I did well with this exact 75 on the weekend. I have had uh, four vintage challenge top eights out of six tries. This deck is obviously very, very strong. And today I'm going to take it for a spin in some games. Um, the deck tech is going to be not going to be that in depth. I suggest you check out the previous video. Um, if you're interested in like a lot of the card choices, in short, this is a fast combo deck uses, using Mishra's Workshop to power up broken artifacts. Hopefully draw your deck, win the game. If you have Force of Will backup, great. If you have a Nurse of Saga as a plan B, great. Um, sideboarding is always very slim with a combo deck like this because you don't want to mess with the critical mass of different pieces. But we try and shore up the most important matchups in Vintage, like Prison Shops, Fast Combo, Hate Bears, and Bizarre. Um, and yeah, that's going to do it. Let's uh, get to the games. Don't go anywhere. All right, here we are for round, round one. My opponent showed Allurus and won the die roll. I have a, yeah, not, not too exciting of a hand. I have turn one E Mox that's not turned on. Academy might do some heavy lifting, but I have a force, so this is probably okay. This hand will have a chance against average hands and lose to good hands. And now my opponent knows what's up. Not, that's not exactly helping the, the case here. Maybe we should collectively shake hands and ban Gitaxian Probe for Vintage. Blooded Strand. Does that tell me anything? Tundra. Okay, cool. Tundra Ponder. Luris. Okay. So this could be this could be cool. I don't I don't necessarily know what I'm up against. Could be some kind of Lavinia deck. That would be tough. Like Lavinia, oof. Those cards are the worst for this deck. Covered jewel. That does not help me. Let's play key. Let's play opal. I realize we give away our deck, but I think it's fine. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Play Lavinia. Try and force. Put in forces back. Yeah, this is a good recipe to beat Jewel. Um, Lavinia Force of Will. Time Vault? No Time Vault. Let's see what kind of Jeskai deck we're up against. Ancestral Plow Strip Mine. <laughs> Do I even play this out? I don't think I play it out. I, I kind of want to want my opponent to be tempted to strip mine this island. I think that's like my only way to, to try and win this game. Oof. The dream here. The dream for the opponent. That's, I mean, that, that could definitely be uh, some kind of metagame reaction, just seeing, whoa, Jewel is winning. I want to I wanna have a deck that's, like, insane against Jewel, and then I try and shore up the rest, right? Okay, the opponent went strip mine there, which is, funnily enough, gives me a chance. But I need to find a few lands, though. Workshop. Maybe that's okay. I think I prefer getting my Workshop Wastelanded. So it's like if people start playing these Lavinia oof decks, then all of a sudden decks like Dredge become insane, and then the cycle can kind of continue. Yeah, the problem is I need to find land and time vault before my opponent finds much of anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, okay, opponent. I see, I see. Okay, I'll go to the next game here. Severe Beating by Lavinia Triple Wasteland Orso Will. Um, let's see, Jeskai. Kind of like these, we can go no Karn, no Force. 
this and might need to cut one more card. The thing about this member is while it's good in the mid game to kill Lavinia with, you need a bunch of land drops to kill Lavinia with it. So I think I'm more I think I want to race it or kill it with a Mastic Core for this particular game. Mm, let's see, I might cut a Sensei's Divining Top. Okay, let's try and cut a top and see if we can overwhelm our opponent. I could also cut Gitaxian Probe when I'm removing Force of Will. I don't think that's... I don't think that's bad. Mmm, Lavinia. Lavinia with Force Backup. That's uh, one of the best things you can be doing against Jewel. As long as you don't lose to, you know, Ursa Saga in the meantime. Okay, this hand is cool. Um... I can go turn one, the one ring, kind of keep pressure on my opponent. I believe. I can also not do that. No, I think, that, I think this is okay. Because if I get forced here, it's more likely that Time Vault plus... Uh, Key from the saga is going to happen. Yeah, wait, what? Force Wasteland was the combo the opponent needed here. Very sad news for me because now Time Vault is like a dead card. Okay. We just land the Tinker. We, we make our opponent have the, the second Force, which they don't. Hmm. Coveted Jewel or the One Ring? Coveted Jewel or the One Ring? Probably I'm supposed to take Coveted Jewel. Draw three. Let's see if I'm a genius. So far, so good. Wow. Hmm. So what's the play here? I have a bunch of good plays. I can develop Time Vault, take it slow. I don't necessarily like that. I'm okay cracking a Lotus here, I feel like. So let's see if we can spike a Mox off the top here with the One Ring. Couldn't, but that is a draw three and I have a walk. My opponent needs to... Do something very strong here. Probably involves on color Mox Lavinia. But even then, I can go draw cards with Ring, develop Saga, cast Time Walk. <clears throat> Land, pass. Opponent is in trouble. Let's draw with the ring. Hmm, so now I have to think about a card like Flusterstorm, I think. I think that would be just wise. Maybe I just go Time Walk now. Aeroblast is also an option. It's been a while since we've seen that card. Time Walk here represents a lot of good stuff with the ring. Also, I haven't made my land drop yet, so my opponent will get a nasty surprise with the Saga. So let's see if my opponent has Steel Sabotage, no Steel Sabotage. And then I'm just going to draw a gazillion here. I have an extra turn in the bank. That's kind of important to think about. So what I could do here is just go... Well, let's draw three more, I guess. But I could go just Ursa Saga, Masty Core, take my turn. Like, this game is just over. So my opponent had Force Wasteland. I just didn't care because I drew like a champ 
tinker into ancestral into time like ancestral time walk black lotus that much to say hmm on the draw does that change anything for me it's it's still a problem again i'm getting i'm getting lavinia on, on two that's a huge problem but i don't think i'm i can do anything about it like if i bring in these dismembers and i get wastelanded even once during that game i just feel like i'm never has to get his member because I need three lands in play to do it. Maybe Force of Will is where I want to be on the draw. Which which cards would I cut? I could cut like one jewel, the needles maybe, and say I'm not going to prioritize Wasteland. I'm going to think a bit more about Lavinia. And then what about the last card? I go. Three of those. Maybe you can cut a Grim Monolith. Maybe that isn't that bad. And then I swap the island for the blue card again. Okay, let's let's try this and guard a little bit better against Lavinia. Because my opponent will get one more turn to kind of play that Lavinia out, so... On the draw, it makes sense. On the play, I can sometimes try and win turn two, and it's less less of a threat. Hmm. This hand has turn one the wrong with the one ring, so I can't put it back. But I'm losing to some stuff. I put a mulligan to six. The tricky part about gets action probe in this hand is while it gives me info. It also enables mind break trap out of the opponent when I when I go trap monolith ring. Trap monolith ring. Yeah. It's actually not easy. When it draws a car from bobble, draw another outcome. That's horrible. But I want to get get further into my deck. Let's see if I regret it dearly. The opponent has nothing in hand. So I get to resolve a one ring. The opponent has Arcanist. And I get I do, I do get wasted, which is annoying. But if I have a one ring in play, I'll take it. So let's see. We get wasted here. The opponent might have drawn a blue card, so there's that. Lose a life from the ring. Draw two. Play Grim. How many cards? Seven. Hmm. Am I supposed to paradoxical outcome on my opponent's turn here? I think so. So I can go. Uh metamorph copying grim monolith oh, okay i get blasted here maybe not get blasted then i try an outcome on my opponent's turn i think that's just reasonable my opponent could be make, doing a pump fake here which is would be hilarious so let's see how many cards am i drawing Maybe I'm just drawing four and I'm leaving the ring in play. Yeah, let's just do it. I'll try and drive. draw four. Let's see if the opponent actually has the pyro. <laughs> I love it. So I didn't draw four so well, which is kind of the point. So if I get Lavinia now, I'm probably losing the game, which is terrible. Okay, Dreadhort is totally fine. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. The whole, but I mean, sometimes that pyroblast pump fake. It, if it, if you just do that every time and you can get like one opponent to not play their card, it's perfect, right? So now, I expect my opponent to have. Um, 
So my opponent has Tundra, Negation, Strip Mine, and one random card. Okay. So I can resolve Masty Core if I want to. Let's draw. There's a Tinker. There is a Tinker. How can we... How can we beat that? So maybe we just go Monolith. Let's see if the opponent's trying to... What do you call that in English? Trying to, like, stop the bleeding or... Bottleneck, that's the one. Let's see. Hmm, so how do we play here? I expect we're up against one hard counter. How much mana do I have right now? I have... What if I play shop? Yeah, I can actually go... Yeah, this is kind of cool. So I can go shop, one floating, cast coveted jewel. If my opponent counters that, I still have mana for Tinker, which is kind of awesome. I get negated, so that is gone. My opponent now has two lands left in hand. So now I have to think a little bit, because if I go Tinker, and I know I have double Metamorph. This is awesome. This is awesome. I was about to say there is some kind of fail rate here, um, but I have, I have two more jewels here. So let's Tinker... Or coveted jewel, draw three. Now it's impossible to lose. Let's load one blue, go to seven. Because now I have paradoxical outcome as uh, like safety valve. Draw some bad cards. Let's play one more. Load one blue. Draw. Opal is decent, not the best. I do that one. Mm. Hmm. So let's see here. I don't want to get bottlenecked. I have an, a, an infinitely large outcome here. Don't think it's a problem to go to three. One more jewel. I believe my opponent will just concede to... Um, Paradoxical outcome, but let's see about that. So let's see here. I can maybe just two floating cast paradoxical is good. So draw 10 cards. The game is over, but we have to click. Okay, the opponent's seen enough. Yeah, so once we get to that spot, drawing my deck and setting up Vault Key, or in this case, um, something like Have Force Will in Hand, Go Masticore, Time Walk, is also more than enough. Um, yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. I was lucky my opponent didn't have a hand with... Like, it was just weak to turn one the One Ring, basically. My opponent wanted me to have, like, Saga or... Um, have another turn to find a blue card, and I would have, like, turn to a jewel or whatever. But, yeah, th this deck puts a lot of pressure on the opponent's opening hand, and uh, I really I really enjoy that part of the deck. It's like, make them be scared, and not... I'm not scared, right? All right, that was it for round one. Let's play a few more to showcase this deck's prowess. All right, we go again. Round two, on the play. I have turn one the one, one ring with counter backup. Let's go. So I believe my opponent is usually a bizarre player. I think I've played against them on like Squee Vine or whatever you want to call it these days, Counter Vine. But who knows? Um, yeah, I'm pretty insulated against a lot of good things here. I think I'm supposed to keep the Grim. One ring, draw. 
So worth noting is I don't have the mana right now to go Coveted Jewel, but I'm confident in my draw step plus two draws from the One Ring, to be honest. Okay, so we're not up against Bizarre. I, well, probably not, right? This is the Mirror, one of the most skill-intensive matchups in all of Magic. Could be. Lotus Ruby. One Ring? Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Uh... I don't even know what I'm up against here. So this is probably some null rod um, moon deck that's trying to attack the meta game, which is ex extremely cool. I feel like I'm I'm supposed to beat you know fair stuff like um, caves of chaos adventure. Hmm, chalice for zero. That's a card that can kind of complicate things, but do you know what? I'm actually going to let that resolve as well. I'm so scared of, like, Spirit Guide Null Rod that I'm willing to let these other cards resolve. Let's see if I regret it dearly. <laughs> so what kind of situation are we looking at here? We're definitely looking to... We want to finish the game, or we want to clone some initiative creatures. That would be pretty cool if I go play like two two chaos adventurers myself, pass the turn with force backup, draw tinker. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We have to remember Chalice for Zero. We have to remember Chalice for Zero. So what can I do here? I can go Monolith, Coveted Jewel. Let's see how much mana do I have to work with. If I go Grim Monolith, puts me at 5. Ancient Tomb puts me at 7. Coveted Jewel puts me down to 4. Hmm. This is, this is a very interesting game. If I manage, if I get one more, like if I ring, I can't get attacked, but I can still lose the jewel. That's the thing. Mm, so maybe the play is go coveted jewel and then you know tinker away the jewel if I don't hit anything insane off of it. Hmm. Yeah, I made I made this game kind of interesting by letting the cellos resolve, but I just didn't want to get null rotted at that point, and maybe that was overthinking it who knows um so right now i have five mana as i said seven with tomb so i can draw and i can tinker into let's say a metamorph if i want to copy my opponent's adventurer while having a bunch of cards in hand hmm i'm not i'm not 100 percent confident we're winning this game this is a complicated game of magic for me, at least. Have it a jewel. Hmm. So, let's see. I have double metamorph in hand. I feel like I should do something with that. So, what if I go... Tinker away the jewel to not get, you know, from my opponent to not steal it. Go find a metamorph. Copy the chaos. Find an island. Pass the turn with force backups. Then next turn, this is gone. This is tapped. This turn I played two guys as defense, and I have... Or one guy, depending on... Man, this is so tough. Okay, let's try it. 
tinker away the jewel because that card will destroy me. I take the initiative. I know island. I pass the turn. Discard Black Lotus. The next turn, I have the mana to go one caves and the one ring, for example. I think I, sh I should be in good shape here. I think this one ring is going to help me a lot. Because I have the ability to double force this turn, and my plan is basically these two cards, and then I should be winning the race. But let's see. Ah. I didn't, I didn't expect this today. It's always cool when you're experiencing like new things, real time recording. Oof, that's not uh, that's not my favorite. It's uh, yeah, it's just I'm just out of my comfort zone, I guess. But but maybe maybe that experience is cool. So the opponent attacks. I'm not gonna trade off because I have a plan. So funnily enough. In a situation like this, where we're basically battling initiative versus initiative, it's better for me next turn to attack first to get the initiative, then play another one to like move on in the initiative from my combat step and from the trigger. Most likely. Then I go Forge and Trap. Yeah, I think that's better. I also have to think about my life totally here. Opponent plays third land. Let's see what this is. I mean, I have Null Rod on my radar, that's for sure. Blood Moon. Blood Moon kind of disrupts my, my plan here, so let's not allow that. I get the turn. I go to 9. Let's draw. Time Walk. Okay. I think that does it. Time Walk is just insane here. Even with Academy, eh, reasonable. So let's see. Attack with Caves. Reveal a jewel, not convinced I'm supposed to do anything about that. So let's forge. When it's at 15, I play Academy. Play Soul Ring. Five. So what I can do here is I think I'm just winning. Can I do anything smart here? Maybe this is fine. So one, two, three. Let's trap the opponent. And let's just cast the walk. And that'll do it. Okay. Oof, that's that wasn't actually complicated, but still wanted to do it right. Okay, so the opponent's trying to play Blood Moon, Null Rods, Chalice of the Void. Yeah, th this, this could be a terrible matchup. Definitely like these guys. I like this member as well. I don't think Tray Ball makes sense. Neither does Karn. Neither does Top. Usually I cut Top when... The game is most likely to be condensed around the first few turns. Worm Coil. It's just six mana is a lot, but if my artifacts are working, it's awesome. I have Workshop, etc. Maybe it's fine. So I can cut at least one jewel. Maybe I can cut two when I'm playing all of these boys. And then what about the last card? 
What about the last card? What would that be? Maybe these dismembers don't do anything. But I guess my opponent will have Magus of the Moon. Mmm. Tough times, tough times. I think you can cut Grim Monolith or Opal in these spots. Maybe Opal is better to cut. Yeah, I wanna I wanna think about my opponent's deck for a second. So mono red hate. Thornal Rod. Or Magus, or Blood Moon. If you play any of those cards turn one, and you also have Trinisphere and Chalice in there as restricted cards, you're, you're doing great against like the top of the metagame. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't hate that idea at all. I've always been interested in decks like that. Like even before Initiative was printed, I was playing around with how to play with. Um, null rods, collector roofs, and stuff like that when the meta was very predictable. The thing is, if he doesn't face the top of the meta, it can be not the best. But yeah, definitely definitely cool to think about. I'm, I'm mostly worried about the, the quality of the threats, actually. I think the hate pieces are good, but the quality of the threats, like in Mono White Initiative, you have like very good beaters, where in red, they probably aren't that great. Compare it at least. All right, what do we have here? We have a hand with turn one force and turn one the one ring. Can't put that down, so our opponent needs to like either have Aeroblast backup or like back to back nasty haymaker. I'm trying to think if I let um, a card like Blood Moon resolve in this spot. Probably, I probably do. Because a card like Blood Moon, then sure, it delays my ring with one turn, right? One, yeah, it delays my ring with one turn. But I think I think I let Blood Moon resolve, and anything that like disrupts my artifacts, they have to counter. It's a pretty cool tool to have um, metamorphs against initiative creatures. It just it just comes up from time to time that. Especially when I have like multiple metamorphs or a time walk or something in the mix, then the tables can turn. Let's see what the opponent ends up firing my way. Here's a chalice with zero. Okay, same deal as last time. I think I have to counter something else. Okay. So now what I can do is I can metamorph my soul ring. Is that good? Hmm, I'll try. I think that's a good play. Because I drew a new blue card, and the blue source doesn't look good right now. It could be in the future, of course, but... Now my plan is kind of... Force a Null Rod. Use a Masticard to deal with whatever else. And if nothing happens, I can go the One Ring. But maybe Masticore is just better. Like, Masticore, untap, discard Emerald to kill Chalice, play from there. Let's see. Trinisphere. Yeah, I think if I if I let that resolve and I play the Masticore, I'm in I'm in I'm in good shape, but. I guess stuff can happen. Let's recall, bad draw. So now my shields are down. I believe I should play a land here. Yeah, let's play a land. Maybe that was bad because there was a maybe a good discard. Yeah, maybe maybe I messed up there. Let's see. So. 
a plan here could be to respond to the upkeep trigger on Masticor and cast Ancestral to have like more options, but let's see. Name Sticker Goblin. Four mana. Six mana. Vandal Blast Overloaded. That's brutal. It's brutal. The one, uh, sorry, Ursa Saga was a good draw here. Now I have Force of Will on my opponent's turn, and I can maybe start grinding with Saga. Oh boy. Vandal Blast Overloaded. That's awesome. I'm down to 12. When it has a lot of mana in play. What is this? That is an all rod. So funnily enough, if my plan here is only saga tokens, I can beat that card. Null rod. Then I'm all in on the on the Ursa saga. If I force it now, oh, that's so tough. Okay, I'll, I'll try. Oh, I may, no, I clicked the wrong button. I was I I was supposed to ancestral end of turn there. I think that would have been better. Okay, so ancestral is still our. Horse fodder here. I, I, yeah, that was bad. I, I needed to hit my land. Well, I didn't need to, but it would be better if I hit my land drop there. And chances are I'll find a blue card like relatively often. Okay, that sucks. I could also hit like Workshop Monolith or whatever. Hmm. Yeah, this, this this game didn't get less complicated now. Oof, the opponent did a good job here. Trinity Sphere was, like, annoying, but not annoying enough. Same with Chalice. Same with Nullrod. And then he kind of caught me off guard with the Vandal Blast. Very cool, uh, like, sequencing situations here. Let's see if our opponent lets us play Magic. So now I'm kind of all in on this Ursa Saga. But I have a Force of Will. I will tell if I have a Force of Will up on the right time. Let's say my opponent plays a must counter. Then all of a sudden I only have that one token because I need to tap three mana for the Force. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Magic is not, magic's not meant to be easy. But yeah, drawing three cards there. I will lose two life. Which is not nothing, but that would have been better. I draw Island, which is not a bad draw. Maybe not a good draw either. So let's pass. So let's see, realistically, I find some random artifact I can play out of tap land, tap tomb. And that no, that didn't that wouldn't work. Then I couldn't activate Saga. Yeah, I don't know. Magus of the Moon. Very, very strong. So all I can do is go Force of Will. Get attacked to nine. Metamorph is not bad. Let's make a token. Do I have any artifacts that work under Null Rod? I don't think so, so let's take whatever. Now I have a 2-2. Two -two. I can play this. So next turn I can go... Mm, Metamorph, copy name sticker. 
play one ring, maybe? Hmm. It's tough to say where the chain kind of fell off for me because I feel like these cards were like beatable, but it was more like what's the opponent then gonna do in the meantime? I feel like Blood Moon is fine. The opponent does not attack. That's very good for me, I believe. So now I can go. I should probably copy names. No, maybe that's stupid. Maybe just copy construct and attack. If I copy name sticker, I can play the one ring, which will grow this one one more, but it's just Yeah, I don't think that's good. Let's just do this and attack for three. Now I'm kind of forcing my opponent to draw something that and I don't care about lock pieces anymore. That's the thing, right? I care about creatures. You can draw all the Blood Moons, all the Null in the world here, I don't mind. One card in hand. And is that the Vandal Blast? That is amazing. Flying First Strike. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play them this turn. If you exile a land card this way, you create a 3-3 Dinosaur. <laughs> that is quite amazing. So I don't have the land to play the One Ring, so I'm just going to get killed by that guy in the air. Mm, so three mana probe, is that it? Nice dismember. <laughs> A bit too late. Ah, that's amazing. Boneheart Dracosaur. I've played with that card a little bit in cube. It's uh it's quite funny. So now the opponent can can do a good smashing and uh that's all she wrote. <coughs> then my opponent's forcing the chump on the other construct. Okay, okay, I've seen enough. Okay, so Funnily enough, we, we died to the Boneheart. Love that name, by the way. Okay, what can we do here? I like what we have going on. Basic Island is a consideration, but maybe I can cut like one paradoxical outcome for a land. I think that's decent. But mainly I'm looking to try and, you know, beat my opponent. While being on the play, like it's a huge difference on the draw. I feel like my opponent will present a must counter turn one very, very often. But when I'm on the play, it's like my job to to do the same, right? Uh, that, that's awesome. I I just love when I see new stuff. I also saw Legacy Deck the other day with crazy creature suite of like X and the. Uh, 04 Menace, like Thought Not Seer uh, card that can transform. Yeah, I just, I just love when, when magic gets explored. Don't get me wrong, I also just love, you know, the competitive aspect of these fairly stock lists are so well-tuned that you can't really improve them anymore. I also enjoy that a lot, but yeah. That was, a, that was a beating. Vandal Blast. Definitely a, str a strong card when, when you're behind on board. Alright, let's see what we can do. We can't do much here. We can st get, like, Saga going, and we have a Force of Will, so... I guess it's a keep, but we're, we're losing to... Must Counter into Must Counter. Thanks to Ancient Tomb, we can activate Saga turn 2. I don't think a deck with like City of Traders, Blood Moon, etc. would play Wasteland, so they rely on spells to deal with Saga, which is kind of good news, I guess, when I have Force of Will. Also, if my opponent goes, I don't know, Null Rod or whatever, I think I'm supposed to ignore it. Ugh. Same with Chalice. 
I'm going to counter Moon Effects. It's also very possible that my opponent's on the draw leaning on Mindbreak Trap. That would make a lot of sense, actually. Like, with how good that deck should be, in, in theory, on the play, it's equally bad on the draw because you don't have any defense for whatever the opponent's doing. Let's see how far my opponent goes here. In the Mulligan Dungeon. We're down to six so far. Let's just recoup my plan here. My plan is go Ursa Saga, Mana Vault, Force Moon Effect. Start activating Saga. Hope it's enough. I'm ignoring Null Rod. I'm ignoring... Finisher is a tough one. Oh, they do play. That's that's a shame. Oof. They do play that alongside Theory of Traders, etc. Hmm, that's surprising. Let's see. Sol Ring. So now I have seven mana, but I passed the turn. This is uh This is very good news for the opponent. Hmm, I definitely I didn't see Strip Mine coming out of that deck. So now loose mana source would be good, but if I have to force, then it doesn't do anything. Outcomes are bad draws. Tinker is bad draw. Saga might be too slow. And this is a huge problem. And, and the funny thing is, my opponent's even giving me time this game. For Monolith. Yeah. This just... This just might be... A game where my opponent got away with it. The whole context of the matchup is that like we, we're both able to do like insane things early in the game, and that's like the context. But when that doesn't happen, it's it just creates a totally new game. Sticker Goblin. I don't think I'm supposed to counter a sticker. Let's see, four mana. Yeah, the problem with that card is, yeah, I, I, I don't, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation, because maybe I'm supposed to let myself, you know, draw blue source and be in this game, like have blue source as a, as a, as a live draw, who knows. Now I have a million colorless mana, nothing to do, which is a big problem. My deck only has two coveted jewels. There's Magus of the Moon, which doesn't do a whole lot. So let's say I got hit by Adventure there, then I would need to draw something now or I'm dead. There's an island, then I would have cast Ancestral Recall and maybe had a shot. Who knows? Instead, I'm down to this next draw step. Or I'm dead. Outcome is a good card. Alongside all the colorless bombs, funnily enough, mm, yeah, I think if I draw Masty Core, played out too many lands. Should have thought about that, not emptying my hand for Masty Core. Spirit Guide. So the opponent's really on bad aggro. Yeah. Nice key. The opponent can attack for six. Let's see what this is. Meltdown. Needle. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. The opponent's not making it as easy for us. Meltdown. The One Ring gets named. I like that a lot, because One Ring is one of my absolute best draws. And there's a Grim Monolith. <laughs> Alright. Can't believe I'm still alive this game. is kind of hilarious. I'm now down to one. And I draw Mastercore. That's funny. 
GG, it looks like a fun deck. All right. That was a uh, anticlimactic finish uh, for, for this match. But uh, yeah, the opponent had a cool deck. Let's, let's uh, appreciate that for sure. Um, I really like the whole... I like the Magus. I like the like Moon. I like the Null Rods. And then when it gets to the threats, like I guess Cave of Chaos Adventure is decent, but I don't know about Sticker Goblin. I don't know about the Draken they showed the other the other game. But I definitely think this shell has potential. I'll I'll look that deck up someday. Alright, let's take one more match before we wrap this up. See ya. Alright. Round three. Let's see if we can finish <clears throat> in style here. We're on the draw versus unknown soul type player. Doesn't matter. This hand is just garbage. No mana sources. This is way better for obvious reasons. We can go turn one Trinisphere, turn two jewel and go from there. A way for this hand to get countered is it's just like if the opponent plays like a death rate shaman or something, turn one, we can get kind of screwed, but let's see. Um what do we put to the bottom? Um We have turn one Trinisphere. What if we get wasteland? If we play everything out, what if we get wasteland and we still have a bunch of mana? So maybe it's just the land. Tough to say. There's also something to say about what if the opponent just goes turn two collector roof? Like force my training sphere, play oof. It just can't win. Hmm. How much mana do I have turn one? Seven? Am I really supposed to just jam that duel into and shoot for the stars? Maybe I maybe I, I can't lose to Maybe I maybe I just can't lose to that oof. Okay. Fair enough. Um hmm, let's see, is there anything like if we get our lotus countered, are we happy? Hmm. Very tough. Very tough. Very, very tough. I don't like playing it out like let's call it Charbelcher, but I think against Oof with this hand, I don't know what else to do. I'm basically hoping my opponent has, I don't know, Force of Vigor would be acceptable. Uh, Luster Storm would be okay. Oof in hand would be okay because I go Tray Ball. Force is a problem. I think I was I was supposed to go for it because if I pass and my opponent just has a collector roof, I can't, the game's just over. So here's our favorite hate bear, and the game is most likely over. Here's the saga gives me a chance, which is funny. Um. Okay, I mean, I'll I'll play the strange sphere and sit and, and say, if you for some reason don't have the third land, you're you probably lose. Wow, the opponent did not have a third land. That's definitely something. And I guess they didn't have Besaju either. So let's see if they can find a third land. Didn't look like it. Huh. Uh, that's that's just uh, incredibly stupid. Like Trinisphere and uh, Ursa Saga pack teaming here to and even drew another saga there. Um so what do we take here? Nothing works under the oof in my deck, so let's say that oof has to jump block at one point. Which card do I want in play? Maybe the answer to that question is Sol Ring, really not sure. So now I'm threatening lethal next turn. Yeah, this is kind of unheard of. And now even if, if my opponent 
They kind of need to cast Force of Vigor on this exact turn. I don't even think the opponent can waste here. I don't think that makes sense. I feel like the opponent has to play some kind of spell. And that spell is probably Force of Vigor. Or the game's over. Here comes the Vigor. And then have one token most likely post Vigor to win with. Oh, okay. So the opponent takes care of land and token. I don't draw anything, and all of a sudden the tables have kind of turned. I only have two mana I'm under the tray ball. So now I'm never casting anything if I get wasted. My opponent just has to beat a construct token. Okay, yeah, this is like an actual great vintage game, right? It really shows that can win, can lose, can win. Like, I, I enjoy those games. Demonic Tutor. When it gets hit down to two. So I think my best draw here is like some kind of land that lets me metamorph. Um, the construct token, but I think I just get wasted and I need to draw um, workshop. But let's see. Okay, the opponent does not go for that, so kind of a risky move, but it works. The opponent wanted to play around. I don't even. I don't even know. I think they're just supposed to kill that ancient tomb. Let's see what they tutored for. Going on down to two life. But I think even like a Termograph would stabilize. Let's count instant land sorcery enchantment artifact. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was a cool game. What is this? Just Fatal Push? Or even one more vigor. Okay, vigor, sure. Good idea to wasteland. All right, all right, all right, opponent. Double vigor negation wasteland. Okay, that makes it lethal next turn. Even if I draw a workshop, I go to two, copy and oof, get attack for lethal. Okay. Hmm. Tough times. Tough times. Okay, so we play against Bug. I might go to these cards. So maybe if we cut Forces, the Probe, that card. Uh, Karn. I like dismembers. I like worm coils. I don't necessarily like masticore. I like grids. I should trim a couple of jewels. Maybe that's for masticores. Needle. Needle for the first top is for sure. And then what about? Hmm. Needle on wasteland is quite strong. Maybe I just cut a copy of Voxel Pull. Okay, let's try again. I think Bug is like one of the worst matchups because Bug is so so good at dealing with like the artifact plan, the draw plan. Like vigors on top of normal normal forces is just nasty. I'm keeping this hand because it has a lot of mana sources in it, basically. It's kind of funny.
I actually feel like I should have reversed the order on uh, Lotus and Opal because of Mindbreak Trap. And I hang on to the Metamorph, see what's going on. I don't get Vigor there. Jet is fine. Emerald is fine. Electroof is uh, resolved, and here comes the wasteland. Yeah, that is definitely the dream for the opponent. So my counterplay is gonna be like to send a metamorph. Puppy collector roof. And then I just start attacking, but I'm not even winning that race. So it's. Hmm. It's definitely not the best. What can we draw? Ancient tomb. That's not going to help. Let's attack with Collector Roof. Mm, can we play this Mart? I'll just play the Island, it's fine. Make my opponent worry about a few more cards. Yeah, as I said, the tr the damage trading here is really not to my benefit at all. Maybe I should stop attacking. Maybe it was bad. Who knows? Am I supposed to stay back? Yeah, I think I am. Maybe that was bad. So the thing is, even if I draw this member, I'm not even winning this race. Hmm. Correction Metamorph. Or, I was about to say, if I draw this member, I, I, I can't even um, benefit, right? Because I don't have any action. I'm trying to make my second oof and continue attacking, see what happens. This is a spot where I want to draw Worm Coil, I want to draw Ursa Saga, but the list is kind of short. I guess Paradoxical Outcome also works. Demonic Tutor. Yeah, this is a big issue because now I'm going to get uh, Vigored and the opponent can just start chipping away. I'm going to get Vigored or oh, worse, let me put it that way. I think this may this might be my my window. I need to find the worm coil. I don't find the worm coil. I will play a defense grid. The opponent does not respond. That's interesting. So no vigor was. Well, maybe the opponent just untaps and goes four mana vigor, who knows? Is this energy flux? Good old energy flux. That's actually a good one. Now I have to pay a million mana, lose my stuff. Yeah, that's gonna do it. All right, we couldn't get the job done here in the leaks. I managed to divide my wins cleverly and put them in, all in the challenge. That's what happens sometimes. We got smoked here. Tough matchup for sure, playing against Oof and uh, like 10 forces or something along those lines.
that's a reasonable counterplay to to this deck uh, being dominant in the meta. So uh, it's up to me to adapt, and I don't think you can adapt within the jewel deck. I think you need to adapt by playing another deck, trying to find a deck that doesn't die to the anti jewel decks and that is well rounded across the field. So that's going to be my next project. Thanks so much for watching. I uh, I had a fun time playing. I when you win, you you can learn. When you lose, you can also learn. That's basically what I'm trying to embrace here. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. And if you didn't check it out already, look check out and you're still interested in more jewel um, content, please check out my previous video where I go through my um, final split run from the Vintage Challenge. I think there's like seven seven different games with cool situations, kind of some analysis, where, where did I play well, where could I have played better, stuff like that. But yeah, other than that, I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, guys. Bye.